guys welcome back to my channel and happy new year this is the first video i'm gonna release this year and let's hope for many more to come so if you've seen my previous video then you should have enough knowledge today to understand the principle of continuity so what is the principle of continuity well first let's think about an air mattress imagine your friends came over and you need to have a place for them to sleep. So you inflate the air mattress and then the next morning when they leave, you have to deflate it. So the principle of continuity in ideal situations will tell us that however much air you put into the air mattress will be the same amount of air that will come out of it the next morning when you deflate it. Another example to think about it is if you have a box with two sides open and you push air through the box. So you blow air from one side of the box. Then the principle of continuity will tell us that however much air comes in from this open side of the box in one minute, let's say, will be the same amount of air that exits the box from the other side in one minute. Because air can't go anywhere. It can't be created or destroyed from the size of the box or anywhere else. So if we have a box, then we can imagine a control volume as well. Let me draw it on the board and then we'll write down the mathematical equation for principle of continuity. Okay, so let's say this is our control volume or our box with volume capital letter V. And now we need to open some sides. So let's say we open the left side and the right side. And this is just to simplify our problem. Because in more complicated aerodynamics problems, the control volume may not look like a box. It might be some weird shape like this. Or it might have different outlets. Let's say from here and from here and from the side here. So this will make our problem more complicated. But we are just trying to understand the principle. So let's make it as simple as it can be. Okay, so air enters through this side and exits through another side. And the speed of air will be V let's say V1 here and V2 here because we don't know what happens inside. Now we can write down the principle of continuity in mathematical terms or in an equation. So okay, we wrote down the expression for the principle of continuity in the integral form. And I know it looks very complicated, but let's analyze each term one by one and see where it gets us. So let's start with the first term and see what it means. So you see inside the integral, don't worry about the integral yet, we, s we have rho d capital V. And rho is density of air and dV is a little volume of the control volume. Let me draw it on the control volume. So dV is just in infinitely small part of the control volume V. And then here we multiply the density of air by this little volume dV. And remember that mass is equal to density multiplied by volume. So if we multiply density by little volume dV, then we will get little mass of this little cube and we can denote it as little dm. So dm will be the mass of this little cube. And then we integrate over the whole control volume of this little mass dm. What do you think that will get us? So imagine our control volume consists of many, many little masses dm, and we integrate, which means sum. So we add all these little masses dm, that will give us the whole mass of this control volume. But that's not all. 
After that, we have derivative over time, ddt, of the whole mass of the control volume. So what does that mean physically? That means the change in mass of this whole control volume. So the first term here will be how mass changes inside this control volume. Remember that for now. Now let's move on to this integral. You see it's a little different. Oh, and I forgot to mention that we assumed that density of air is constant here. But remember that in more complicated aerodynamics problems, density of air could change as well. And remember what it depends on? It depends on the velocity with which air enters the control volume. So keep that in mind for more complicated problems. But for our case, we assume density is constant. So let's look at our second term here. It looks a little bit different than this term, but let's analyze it and make it simple. So here we have density multiplied by the velocity of air, and we don't have a volume here. And it makes this look more difficult because we don't know what density multiplied by velocity means. But we can make it simpler. Assume that this control volume consists of many volumes of mass equal 1. So we assume that V equals to 1, anything cubic meter or cubic feet or something else. And then our expression for mass will give us just the density. So here we assume that one cu cubic meter of air with density given enters the control volume with some speed v. So you can actually consider density as mass. And remember what mass multiplied by velocity gives you? It gives you momentum. And essentially, physically, it means how much air comes in into the control volume. But now we have another term here, which is ds, and it's a vector. By the analogy here, you can think of ds as a little surface area on the control volume. Let's draw it here, for example. This will be ds. And again, here we assume that this velocity with which air enters the whole surface of the control volume is equal. But in reality, it might not be the same, because here the velocity could be higher and here it could be lower. But that's not for today. So assume we have the same velocity over this whole surface, and then we have a little surface ds here. And we have air with mass m, or density, with velocity entering through this little control surface. And we will worry about this dot product later. So if we have this little portion of air with momentum, rho v, entering through this little surface ds, and then we integrate over the whole control surface. So the whole control surface is not only this part, it's also the other part through which air can exit or enter. If there was a hole here, we, we should count this as well. So the integral over ds means the whole control surfaces. So let me write it down here. Our whole control surface is here and here. And for example, this will be S1 and this will be S2. The total control surface will be S1 plus S2. Don't forget about that when you integrate over control surface. So essentially, this term shows us how much air, meaning the density of air, which we can think of as mass, with speed v, enters through the control surface. And this means how much air enters through this side and exits through the other side. And this is where the dot product comes in. Because in physics or mathematics, we denote the surface by a normal vector. And a normal vector is perpendicular to the surface and pointing outward. 
So in this example, if we have V1 entering in this direction, then the ds vector, or normal vector to the surface, will be pointing outward. So this will be our first surface, and here it will be pointing here. So then the dot product can give us a sign with which air enters or exits through the surface, meaning do we add it to the whole mass inside the control volume or do we subtract it? And we will do that in the next video, very detailed. But for now, I just want you to understand what this whole equation means. So let's get rid of some things that we don't need for now. And let's look at this equation again. So this term will mean change in mass over the whole control volume, which means the mass inside the volume and how fast it changes. Let's write it down as mass change. And change means with respect to time, how much it changes in one minute or one hour or one year. And this term means how much air enters or exits through the control volume. So we denote it as input or output of air. And you can see that the whole equation is equal to zero, which means that the mass change plus however much air enters or exits will always be zero. And this means exactly what we described earlier with the box, which means that the mass change inside the control volume will be equal to however much air comes in and we will add that mass to the mass that we already had and then subtract the air that came out of it. So in conclusion, the principle of continuity tells us that the change in mass inside any control volume or any volume, and it's true not only for air but for liquids as well, will be the addition of mass that enters and subtraction of mass that exits. It's very simple. And now let's do some questions to make sure you understand the principle of continuity. What are some examples of the principle of continuity in real life? Can you explain what these two terms of the equation mean physically? So if the principle of continuity is clear for you, let's go to the next video where we will analyze this problem in more detail.